I'm here at Charleston Wine and Foods Test Kitchen and Event Space, and I'm joined by Jacques Larson of The Obstinate Daughter and Wild Olive. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. So tell me, what are we going to be preparing today? This is a pasta that was on the uh, original menu at Wild Olive. It is such a simple pasta that I thought it would be a great dish to recreate for the viewers today. It leaves uh, a lot of room for improvisation. Um, in this case, like with the chicken this, in this dish, we uh, at the restaurant like to grill it and have it ready on hand. Another thing in this dish, like any dishes, there's always a lot of building blocks to items that uh, are techniques that you can incorporate into uh, other dishes that you do, but um, so many pastas, people love to get very heavy handed with garlic, but in this case, I prefer to take the whole garlic clove and just uh, crush it, one or two is plenty, into your olive oil. First thing I like to do is add sausage. So can you tell me about your involvement with the Charleston Wine and Food Festival? What are you gonna be involved with, with this festival? We always partake in opening night, which is fun. It's always great to see uh, all the other Charleston chefs. We joke around, it's the one time a year where we all get to see each other. Um, and then uh, we, I think this will be the fourth year in a row that we are going to do our brunch at the Obstinate Daughter, which is uh, always such a big hit. We tend to do anywhere from 13 to, to 17 courses, rapid fire brunch, usually with bubbles. Like I say, that not only the staff loves it, but uh, uh, it, by how quickly it sells out, it's pretty good indication too that uh, uh, a lot of people love attending it as well. And then lastly, we're doing a new event this year at Wild Olive. We're doing a, a Sea Island brunch out on John's Island where we basically will be bringing in purveyors from uh, from John's Island specifically, and kind of highlighting uh, all the marvelous things that they, they grow and catch, and uh, especially for guests coming in from out of town, a great way for them to experience uh, a hyper local lunch, so to speak. Beautiful. sounds like a lot of fun. The chicken in this dish, we grilled it when it was on the menu way back in the day. Jeez, I guess it's been about nine years ago. I like it because it just adds a hint of smokiness to the dish, but rather than fire, fire up the grill at home, you could just take a chicken breast. Um, you could you know, roast it whole, do the same thing I'm doing. This chicken is cold now. Um, or if you don't even want to go through that trouble, you could just get a breast and, and chunk it up. And when your sausage is about completely, or almost halfway rendered, you could add your chicken in then and just uh, cook it that way. So the sausage is browning really well, getting some good color on it. You know, especially in our house sausage that we make at uh, both restaurants, it, it can be a little fatty. So one thing, once this is a little more rendered, we, we will definitely straight out some of the fat. So once my sausage is uh, pretty much rendered, I'd say go ahead and add your penne pasta. Once again, I do salt the water. Uh, you want to infuse a little bit of flavor into the pasta. It also helps it uh, cook a little bit more evenly. Um, and then at this point, it's really just a matter of uh, pretty much putting everything together. We have our sausage, again, nice and brown, caramelizing that meat. We're going to add our chicken. And I almost forgot to take out our garlic clove. And then at this point in time, we're really just kind of heating our chicken through. It's already cooked through. We just want to make sure it's nice and warm. Um, again, I'd say we'll probably season with a little bit of salt, a little cracked black pepper. And then uh, the white wine in this, a lot of times at home we'll have, uh, God bless my wife, we'll have an open bottle of white wine that we can use. But if you go out and you know, buy white wine strictly for cooking purposes, um, you know, people say that you shouldn't cook with wine unless you drink it, but uh, I am not that particular in my choice of, of wine whenever I use it, but you really just want to splash. Anytime I cook with wine, especially in pasta though, you want to make sure, whether it's uh, steaming clams or whatever, I always try to cook most of that white wine out. We're just looking for a little bit of subtle acidity, kind of round the dish out, so I'd say, but next sauce, just a little bit of heavy cream. Um, 
I really don't use a lot of cream in uh, my cooking these days, but in this, I do love it. It's just a nice binder. So as that reduces, uh, we have the rest of our ingredients. We have a little bit of pine nut. If you can't find pine nut, um, you, know, you could easily probably substitute um, uh, even a walnut uh, or even a pecan, uh, being down in the south here. Just a little bit, uh, again, more so for textural, a lot like the rendered sausage. It's gonna help give a little bit of bite to the dish. And then um, once we're almost done together, I have a little pre-grated cheese. They'll add, again, kind of make it nice and saucy. And then our arugula. All right, so what happens now? At this point, our pasta's cooked. We're looking good. I have the arugula stage. We're just gonna strain off our penne pasta. And really, it's just a matter of tossing everything together. Maybe a little more cheese. I just tasted it. Definitely could use a little bit more seasoning. I always like to fold too, a little bit of greenery right at the end, just so all the greens aren't hammered and, and wilted too much. Oh yeah, coming together though. Some right at the end, and voila, that's it. To experience more delicious dishes just like this one, Charleston Wine and Food Festival is happening March 4th through 8th, 2020. All the details are on charlestonwineandfood.com.